Who cares? Nobody, nobody. I'm, I'm the opener. Oh, shit. We've I'm already gotten pretty going. deep. I know. And, and, you know, I've been giving thoughtful responses thanks <laughs> to the <laughs> best damn root beer. <laughs> that could be you. You have asked, like, is language a problem? Should I be oh. cleaning myself up? I'm obviously, I'm very, very wanted. I'm very in demand. Uh, Michelle, yes, Brad. Brad Scott. Legitimately, let's just say, I don't know, six years. No one ever knows. I mean, I did open mics in like 2003 and emceed for a few years. In yes, Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Yep, at Crackers Comedy Club. Indy's premier place to watch stand-up comedy. <laughs> Locations in both Broad Ripple and downtown. I started going on the road and like, for real in like 2010, 11. So that's where I count. So let's just say six years. Uh, I didn't want to get a real job. I don't like real work. And uh, this seemed like a good avenue. And I found out I was okay at it. And I've just been doing it since. I do a, a joke that everybody likes, and then I'll say something following that only a third of the room will actually appreciate. That's been my style. But those, a th those third will go, oh, like, just like you, the mice and men, which I was shocked. Like they, usually that's less than 30% of the crowd. And tonight they were awesome. This was a great crowd. It's a Thursday, there's a festival of some sorts. Of course there is. Uh, Dave Chappelle is here tomorrow night and he's doing three shows because why wouldn't he? Uh, because the first two sold out and I'm sure the third is like half full and those are the half that wouldn't have been here. Uh, but yeah, if you could look at me or Dave Chappelle, I'm going to go watch Dave Chappelle too. But you should come out and watch this show. John is hilarious. Oh yeah, Montel Jordan. I grew up with that music. Uh, Bone, Montel Jordan, Tupac. Big. I mean, I grew up in a small white suburban town in Indiana, so I was obviously very heavily influenced by gangster rap music. Uh, Snoop's one of my all-time favorite artists just because his entire catalog is amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm a big connoisseur of 80s and 90s pop culture. I do a lot of that on my social media, at Brad Scott Comedy. We're also trying to get a plug from Best Damn Root Beer. At Brad Scott Comedy, we do a lot of uh, nostalgia posts where we just post uh, what family would you rather have grown up with? Uh, you know, the Banks from Fresh Prince of Bel Air, um, the Tanners from Full House, uh, or the Dinosaurs from Dinosaurs on, AB, you know, on ABC in the 90s. And 80s and 90s kids will get that. Basically, I use a lot of my real life stuff. I'm a single father, and uh, I have sole custody of my daughter, which is a little unique. So I write about those experiences, and then the other stuff is just funny shit that me and my friends think is funny. And if, if it goes through my friends, then I feel like it's ready to try in front of crowds. And then it's just trial and error at that point. We won an award last year. We're gonna be uh, recording at a, uh, a, it's called PopCon. It's a popular culture convention in Indianapolis. It's a pretty big convention and uh, it's the showdown podcast on itunes stitcher podomatic all formats and yeah we, we talk about all types of movies weekend of bernie's uh versus police academy uh and we also do episodes where we just look at old movies and see if they hold up like clueless teenage mutant and turtles 2 secret of the use which does absolutely absolutely does hold up um and then i do another podcast called wrestlemania wrestlemania <laughs> Come be a rasshole. That's our fans, the rassholes. That's what we call our fans. We talk about professional wrestling, which we're both big fans of. And we do kind of a parody wrestling podcast. A lot of wrestling podcasts are very serious. And, you know, they, uh, they want to analyze everything into great detail. And we kind of look at it as we don't know a whole lot, but we'll just say whatever we think is funny. Something in sales and hating my life. Got to pay bills, and it pays a lot more than sales at times. So, and the biggest payoff at the end. I mean, I'm still chasing that, you know, that purple dragon that every other comedian is trying to just make it to where you have a comfortable living, and you get to go to clubs that sell themselves out just because you're going to be there, or you can go do the little theaters in the town and do three shows because you're Dave Chappelle. 
means I get to enjoy what I do for a living, and I get to do something that I think my daughter is proud of me for doing. She's gotten to meet Dave Coulier, Mrs. Wong from the Thundermans, uh, several other comedians, uh, and I feel like it's a, it's a good identity for me. It works for me. Uh, I got to work with Dave Coulier, uh, Joey Gladstone from Full House, and my daughter is obsessed with Full House. And I mean, since she was a year old, she would watch it when she went to sleep as a baby. It was just comforting to her. And she just really loved it. And she loved Joey Gladstone the most because he was a comedian like that. And I got to work with him. And thanks to my home club, Crackers Comedy Club in Broderville in downtown Indianapolis. Um, and because of them, I got to have my daughter meet Dave Coulier. And I have a video on my phone. It's the most adorable thing in the world. And it meant the world to her. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm pretty glad I do this.